Welcome to Jean and Mike do the New York Times crossword. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Mike. And today we are doing the crossword for Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. So, did you do the crossword? I did do the crossword. And what did you think? I thought it was very, very clever. Mm hmm. So, what, what about you? I also thought it was clever. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, it involved the movie that I've not seen. Oh, yeah. That would be hard if you hadn't seen the movie. You, I don't think you would. Uh, you could uh, you could solve the puzzle, but but uh, maybe not appreciate it as much. But Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't it didn't quite resonate. But but yes, I am living proof that you can solve the crossword <laughs> without having seen the movie in oh, question. I right. certainly I certainly recognize the name of it. I've mm -hmm. just never seen the movie. Oh, uh huh. Mm hmm. So while we're on the topic of the movie, why don't we talk about the theme? Okay. Well, the name of the puzzle was Breakout Performance. And the whole theme revolved around the movie, The Shawshank Redemption. And uh, the name of the movie actually encompassed three down and six down. Three down being The Shawshank and six down being Redemption. Uh, and then, uh, so those were the first two themed clues. And then just at the exact same place on the other side of the puzzle, we had two more themed clues, 15 down and 18 down. 18 down meaning the lead role in the movie. And that was, of course, Andy Dufresne. 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 And then... The 15 down was the actor who played that role, and that was Tim Robbins. And they are like mirror mirror answers because uh, they uh, the Shawshank has the same number of squares as Andy Dufresne. Du I think it's Dufresne because it's, you know, D-U-F-R-E-S-N-E. Dufresne. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Tim Robbins has the same number of letters as Redemption. So you sort of have these... Uh, parallel theme clues at the top. Right. Then at the bottom, you had this series of grade squares uh, that encompass parts or sometimes all of, uh, of an answer, but typically just parts of an answer. Uh, and they sort of make this winding passage uh, across the bottom of the puzzle. And if you answered the questions correctly, they or you answered, you answered the you know the clues correctly, they spell out all kinds of ways to escape a prison, uh, and and of course that was the whole major plot line of the uh, the Shawshank Redemption when Andy, after serving like I don't know how many years, twenty five years or something, he breaks out of prison. Uh, in a tunnel that he creates, but there was tunnel, there was passage, there was canal, there was chute, there was tube, vent, he, uh, trench, shaft, and duct. And, of course, that was kind of the the climax of the movie when he did escape, and you, you got to see him crawling through all of these various uh, vents and tubes and eventually a sewer line to finally get out of prison in a very, very clever way. So so you had all that related to the movie. Then within those circled, uh, or within those grade squares, there were some circled squares. And again, if you answered everything correctly, they actually spelled out the name of the character. A-N-D-Y-D-U-F-R-E-S-N-E. Andy Dufresne. Um, so, um, and, and it was kind of interesting. I have never seen this in a puzzle, but the why in Andy was actually not part of any clue. It was right in the middle of a black, well, I guess it is part of a clue. It was, it was kind of like it was half black and half white. The clue 115 across annual May race familiarly was Indy. And so you had the D and the Y um, uh, that that formed part of the Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, the A and the N were under the D. But the Y was circled, but half of the square was white and the other half was black. So that you had a little black 
edge between that and the next clue, 116 across, which was held together in a makeshift way, which was duct taped, and that's where you got the duct of, uh, of this grid or this uh, sort of maze of various words related to small passageways. <laughs> so I thought that was very interesting. Right, because the Y looks like it was sort of tunneling through the black exactly, square and yeah. was almost through mm -hmm, it. Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. So it was like, there's Andy tunneling through the duct and then through the shaft and then in a trench and then the vent and then the tube, then the chute, the passageways, the canal and the tunnel. So... So anyway, that was the theme. And then there was kind of a revealer clue right in the middle. It was sig Houdini's signature feet or a hint to the circled squares in this puzzle. And of course, that was Houdini's signature feet was escape act. And that's exactly what Andy does in the movie. He escapes from the prison uh, and also makes sure all the bad guys in the prison get their due diligence. Really? Yes. Uh-huh. Hmm. So. Mm hmm Well. And the bad guys were supposed to be the good guys. They were the police and the warden, and they were all doing very bad things, and he made sure that they all got punished for it. I see. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe we're going to have to announce, like, spoiler alert or something to oh. warn people about this now. <laughs> well. Of course, um, it came out in 1990-something, right? I was going to say, it's been out for a long time, but... Uh, but it is rated by um, IMDb as the highest rated movie they've ever had on, really? on that site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's it's saying a, a lot. Classic. It's, it's a very, very entertaining movie. So. Well, I'm now you've convinced me I'm going to have to watch it. Oh, yeah. You would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I will get right on that. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so that was that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that all of the all of the um uh various various paths listed here, the tunnel, the canal, the passage, the chute, the tube, the vent, the trench, the shaft, and the duct, those were all traversed in the movie? I, I don't know if all of those were traversed. I but I mean he 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 made a hole in his wall and he covered it with a poster of a movie star mm. and he just kept i mean he, he did this over decades oh kept, he had this tiny little hammer and he just kept chipping away chipping away until he finally created this tunnel that he could go through the wall but then he did go down um, a vent i think like an air vent and then you know eventually he was able to get out uh, through the sewer line and he went 500 yards like through the sewer line to this pond and he had actually stolen um, the suit the warden's suit the warden he worked kind of for the warden because he was very he was very smart he, he was a banker uh, and he did the books and stuff for the prison and he worked for the the warden and he stole one of his suits and a pair of his shoes and a plastic bag and he and he put that in this plastic bag and tied it around his foot. And so as he's crawling through, he's he's got this plastic bag with this suit and nice clothes in it. So as soon as he gets out of the sewer, he, he washes off in the pond, puts the suit on, and he's a free man. He didn't, wow. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Now, this is entirely fictional? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't. Just, I don't think this ever really. Just happened, wondering. But, I don't know. Uh, but great acting. Uh, Morgan Freeman's in it. Oh and, well, then it's going to yeah, be good. It, Guaranteed. It was. It was a very good movie. Mm -hmm. Well, Andy Dufresne was one of the uh, one of the many clues that I did not know in this crossword. Mm -hmm. um, but it was not the one that did me in. Oh. And actually, none really did me in. But I had I had some some difficulties in various places. Although, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out. 20 down, famed Ford flop, the Edsel. Yep, Edsel made it in the puzzle again. Once again. Uh -huh. And I'll I'll bet the, the CEO of Ford is, <laughs> is he probably does the New York Times crossword every day uh -huh. and is probably now livid that this is the 532nd <laughs> time. I haven't counted, actually. I suppose we could go over to, to uh, xwordinfo.com to get the exact number. I bet it's over 100. But there have been a staggering number of appearances of the word Edsel. Mm -hmm. In fact, according to Xword Info, it has shown up 
294 <laughs> times. Oh That's a lot of times to remind someone that they had a flop uh-huh. in the 1950s. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's all. <laughs> I, th- I think Joel has to put the brakes on this. <laughs> Of course, there's probably some joke about brakes and Edsel that he's tried, but they just don't work. Mm -hmm. So, anywho, um, that was there. For 57 across, I was having trouble sort of in the center. Bad luck, I guess. It was my turn, that's all. I was in the path of the blank. Mm -hmm. Quote from 18 down, and that was Andy Dufresne. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was, at first I had the Lord... um, I was in the path of the Lord, no. which would seem to me would be bad luck, mm-hmm. um, but it turned out to be tornado, right. uh-huh. which made more sense. Uh-huh. Um, and, and right above that, you already mentioned this, 50 across Houdini's signature feat, or a hint to the circled squares in this puzzle, escape act. Mm-hmm. Well, last night when I was working on this crossword, I decided that the heart of Georgia was Mason. Oh. And so I had the escape east. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I mean, I've heard of the phrase or the word escapist, mm-hmm. um, like escapist entertainment. And I thought maybe escapist is sort of an old time <laughs> name for an escape artist. Uh-huh. And then I looked at it in, the, in <clears throat> this morning for about one millisecond. And I realized it's not Mason, it's Macon and it's an escape act. That's right. And um Mm-hmm. You know, there there are times at night when I should just stop trying to find the right answer because uh-huh. it's not in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was pretty I was pretty pleased with myself that I thought it was Mason, Georgia. <laughs> no, it's Macon. I wonder if there is a Mason, Georgia. That would be terrible. <laughs> so yeah, many people show up there. They probably sell a lot of Mason jars. That's right. That's right. Just so. like in Macon, they sell a lot of mm-hmm. Macon jars, or, mm-hmm. or they're making a lot of Mason jars. Mm-hmm. Well, this this was another reason I enjoyed this puzzle so much is because when I filled in the last letter, the puzzle solved. See, was, uh, that rarely, rarely happens on a Sunday, but it did today. And I felt pretty good, and I thought, this is going to be my day. Oh. <laughs> but it wasn't. Uh-huh. Instead, I had the reaction of six... Well, escape East. I, I would have questioned that. Well, I, 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 I thought, again, last night, that there was something <laughs> suspicious about it. Well, for one thing, you only had one E between escape and east. So. Well, it was escape east. <laughs> and I just, I may, you know, if, if we live in a world of redick and adorbs, well, that's true. why can't we have an escape east? <laughs> right? There are no rules. There are no guardrails for the language. I guess not. Anyway, 61 across, this is the worst. The answer was UG. Yes. And I was thinking that last night. And I was also thinking last night, have you ever heard anyone say UG? UG. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Well, you just did. I, I don't think we should count that. Uh-huh. No, have you heard I've anyone? Heard people say that. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That just sounds like, you know, kerplow ker, or kerpow, that, that they write these sounds, but no one actually says oh, it. Oh, no, I've heard people say UG. I like mm-hmm. I like dates and names. Oh. <laughs> I want to go and talk to these people. Did you really say UG? <laughs> That's hard to... I think it's rarer than... than I, I don't think it's as common as... Well, of course, how many times has UG shown up in the New York Times crossword? Mm-hmm. The answer to that is 211 <laughs> times. Now, how many times has it shown up next to Edsel? <laughs> UG, Edsel. In the same puzzle. In the same like puzzle. Today. Hmm. Yeah. I think I think Ford could could make one giant lawsuit. Mm-hmm. I think I hear people say "ick" more than "ug," but I have heard people say "ug," hmm. like "ug," it was awful. Or, mm-hmm. I mainly hear people say "gosh darn it." No, oh. <laughs> really? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Let's see what other old timey words did we have? Like "gosh darn it" and mm-hmm. "darn tootin'." Oh, that's that's good. I feel there are fewer still missing here, but mm-hmm. um, I had twenty seven across. That was let's see, uh, colorful ingredients in some cookie recipes. I eventually got it, and then I'm trying to figure out what's a mandums. 
I mean, again, remember, I came up with Escape East. <laughs> so I looked at it, and it's like, oh, M&Ms. Got yes. it. Okay. There you but go. For, for a brief moment, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what a mandem was. <laughs> well, of course, that that's not how it's written on the bag. It's got an ampersand. ampersand. So you don't really think about the word and in I there. wonder if they've ever had a crossword with an ampersand in it. Mm, I don't know. I don't think we've seen one. I don't think I, I remember any, no. Yeah, I may have to work on that. <laughs> uh, I got 32. I, I had a 50-50 chance for 32 across part of HMS. It was three letters, and it was either going to be his or her. Right. I went for his. Me too. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it was her. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. What else was interesting here? 58 across sounded not quite right to my ear. Become stuck. Hit a rut. Mm. Yeah. Did that sound... It just sounds, I mean, you, you can be in a rut, but I, I guess I haven't heard the phrase hit a rut. You know, hit a brick wall, um, but hit a rut? You sort of fall into a rut. <laughs> I mean, a rut, by definition, is a depression. Right. So, so it doesn't, it's nothing that rises up that you could hit. Mm. It's just something you fall into. Well, I think hit is meaning you encounter, you encounter it, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, then I think the answer should have been become stuck. Or became stuck, encountered a rut. <laughs> that would have been harder to work into the crossword, I, I guess. Think so yes. Mm-hmm. Sixty-four cross, brainy bunch, Mensons. Yeah, that was an interesting answer. <laughs> yes, I've never heard them referred to as Mensons. We are the Mensons. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah. Um, of course, they probably pronounce it differently. Because they're so brainy. Probably. Mais sans. Mm-hmm. They'd probably say it in French. And then the c- complete opposite, 26 across, real no-brainer, utter fool. Yep. That's a great phrase. Utter fool. You are an utter fool. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you're a mensin. <laughs> that would be an interesting argument. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> 62 across. Receptacle for soaking before a pedicure is a foot spa. That's right. Is that like a fancy name for a glass that you stick your toes in? No. I mean, it's actually a spa? Yeah. You you put your whole body in it? No, you just put your feet in it. So it's some sort of a container that you're putting your foot in, and no, they're calling it a... No, it's like a small little spa, you know, like a whirlpool tub. You oh. You put your feet in it, and, it, and the water swirls around it, and it feels really good. Do they wash it between customers? Oh, you bet. Okay, just, just want to check. It could all go wrong. Mm-hmm, no, I'm, I I do believe they they rinse it out after every use. So. We have 69 across, rap group inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, NWA. Yeah. Um, Northwest Airlines. That can't be right. No, I didn't, I didn't know what that was. I th- I've I've heard the letters. N W A. So I don't know. Well, we'll just sort of ponder that and, and wait for listeners to 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 uh, chip in and help us with <laughs> well, this. I can look it up real quickly here. N W A. Where's the fun of that? Um, while you're looking, ninety one down, the swans in the seven days of Christmas. Was a sep. Ted. It's uh, actually an American hip hop group. Oh, are we are we are we jumping back and forth here? Okay, it's NWA. Yeah, it's an American hip hop group, and that is their name, NWA. Oh, it doesn't stand for anything. Nope. Because there is the National Wrestling Alliance, <laughs> yeah, no. and again, Northwest Airlines. No, no, it's NWA. Okay, hip hop. I think it stands for something, and they just don't want to admit it. <laughs> So. Sort of like SAS doesn't want to say that they really stand for the statistical analysis system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least they used to. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, for getting back to the swans, uh, at first I had I had it starting with an S and an E and ending with an ET, and I thought it was secret. I wasn't sure why the swans were secret, <laughs> but but it fitted, and I didn't the have anything else. Swans. The secret swans. <laughs> But then eventually I realized it was septet. That's right. Seven swans a-swimming. Mm, secretly. <laughs> I thought 93 was kind of unusual. 93 down. Some makeshift fans, fronds. I'm like, 
When was the last time you used a frond as a makeshift fan? When I was in Egypt. <laughs> yes, that's, I, that's I, what I thought of immediately. <laughs> I, I had my my hand my uh, handmaidens <laughs> yes, wave fronds, fronds at me. <laughs> um, let's see. We had eighty across. Eighty across was grows dimmer, and I went for fades, which meant I had all sorts of trouble with with uh, 80 down, 80 down being, hey, I'm walking here. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't do that with the right accent. Hey, I'm walking here. No, that doesn't sound right either. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Anyways, uh, so I had, I, I had something like fat chit. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, well, fat chit. And, and then eventually I realized that it wasn't fades because I felt pretty confident in fades, uh -huh. but it was wanes. And yeah, then it uh -huh. became watch it. <laughs> Which made a whole lot more sense than fat, uh -huh. fat chit. Well, I actually put fades too. Ah. As soon as I figured out 80 down was watch it, I immediately changed it. So you're I did not try to make it into a fat chit. <laughs> you're unfamiliar with fat chits. Yeah. I, I, That's when you, get, when you get, you know, um, severely... Uh, recom severely recompensed? No, that doesn't make any sense. When mm -hmm. you are highly recompensed for something, you get a fat chit. Oh, really? I think so. Now I know. <laughs> it also might be the name of a band. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think that is probably it for the crossword. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a little bit of listener mail that I think we should oh. get into. Mm -hmm. This is from Tom. And Tom writes in to say a quick thank you for a fond memory. Not a frond memory, okay. but a fond memory. a fond memory. Hello, Gene and Mike. In the episode for Tuesday, September 17th, Mike mentioned a website for Acme Klein bottles provided by one Cliff Stoll. The name rang a bell, and I had to look up if it was the same person I thought it might be. And it turns out it was. In addition to the topological glass blowing you mentioned, I knew him as the author of a book called The Cuckoo's Egg. It is the unlikely non-fiction account of how a Berkeley astrophysicist took down an East German computer hacker over a 75 cent computer usage accounting error. Oh my. Wow. Huh. I, I likely read the book over 20 times as a kid and is at least partially responsible for me winding up as a computer programmer. Huh. How cool is that? Yeah. I hadn't thought about that book or read it in close to 25 years, and I'm now planning on rectifying that. I wanted to thank you for reminding me of a wonderful memory from my childhood and for learning that he now does glass blowing, which is likely, likely going to be some of my family's Christmas gifts this year. Keep up the good work on the podcast, and thanks again, Tom from Maryland. Wow, that's huh. great. That is that is absolutely fascinating. Uh -huh. The cuckoo's egg. Uh -huh. What a coincidence. Yeah, now I want to read it. Yep. So. <laughs> and actually, that's not a bad idea. Klein <laughs> bottles for everybody. <laughs> for any holiday, it could be for you know birthday, <laughs> wedding, funeral, whatever. You could have a have a lovely Klein bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's fascinating. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much, Tom. That was really interesting. Um, curious to know what, what sort of computer programming you do. Do you know anything about .NET MAUI? If so, we should talk. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that is it for today. Remember that Tuesday is coming up, and that means not only is it going to be Triplet Tuesday, <laughs> but it's going to be our Triplet Tuesday contest, <laughs> which is your opportunity to win fabulous swag. And so make sure you start practicing now if you haven't already. Yeah, uh, look uh, look over your three letter <laughs> word lists and the clues that go along with them. Get your bandana, get your running shoes, whatever <laughs> it takes to get in shape mentally for Triplet Tuesday. Do, 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 do. All right. Well, that is it for today. And Okay, I was just waiting for one more to do, but that's that's fine. You that gotta, is that is you it. Gotta say the words. I see. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, that is it for today. So thanks everyone for listening. If you want to do what Tom just did, you can drop us a, cro a line crossword podcast at iCloud dot com or click on the send fan mail link in the show notes. And that's it for today. We'll be back again with our cutting edge analysis of tomorrow's crossword tomorrow. Bye bye.